I'm so sorry for what you guys just watched. I'm just speechless. Me voy yo. Hi everyone, my name is Marta Mama and I'm here to explain you all the references about Drag Race España All Stars. So as I was saying, I'm very sorry in the name of my country, in the name of the franchise, in the name of everything uh, for what you ju guys just watched. I know it's not my responsibility, but I feel like I'm a little bit disappointed so yes we still have amazing drag so that's the important part right that the drag quality is unmatched for this franchise so that's why we're still talking about this okay um uh, but yeah mm, let me tell you all the tea before we start i want to thank all these lovely people that made uh, this video possible thank you guys so 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 much Thank you especially to Maddie Runt. Um, as always, they are amazing and they have become a huge, I don't know, support <laughs> for me and validation somehow. So thank you, Maddie. I love you. Of course, if you too want to support my channel, I'm going to leave you my PayPal account down below. Uh, thank you so, so, so much in advance and thank you for making all of this possible. So at the beginning of the episode, Paquita just left and Sagittaria is still very mad about the judging and Ornella is also feels some type of way because Paquita was the last sister from season three that was still there. So yeah, it's all like a little bit tough. Uh, but side note, uh, Poopy has this super funny comment that I just wanted to just in case you missed it. Uh, Setla says, oh, so you're all going to be against me because now I have two Peter badges? No, it's not Peter Veg. However, they call them because now I have two badges. And Poopy says, no, 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 we're not going to be against you. Don't worry, Sethless, we're not against you. We are in favor of you not winning. I love that. Super funny. <laughs> so we get to know that this week is going to be the girl band challenge. In Supreme's message, she mentions a couple of girl group bands. I'm going to leave a couple of songs down below. She mentions Objetivo Birmania and she mentions Las Vulpes. I don't know if she mentions any other, but yeah, I'll leave you a couple of songs down below in case you're interested. They let them uh, choose the groups, which I find usually like super shady. Anytime there's no indication or no rules on how to form the band, the groups and the bands, uh, it's always the shadiest. I love it. I think it's the best way. Mm, but yeah, so now we have in one group, there are all the girls from season two. And in the other group, we have all the group girls that are not from season two. One of the songs is going to be a lot more poppy and the other one is going to be a lot more like urban Latino reggaeton rhythm. So throughout the whole preparation, we can see that Sagittaria is completely out of it. Sagittaria has explained since that during this whole episode, she was very heavily medicated because she had a very big like panic attack, like and she had an anxiety a crisis where she had to take medication and she was like out of it um but yeah this whole episode is just like i don't know how long of everyone insulting sagittaria for no rhyme or reason in a way where no matter what she did uh she was going to be criticized so the whole thing the whole episode is all of the girls saying bad things about sagittaria I don't care how much, how fed up they were. This level just is not comfortable to watch. And I think that it's a very severe miscalculation from production. Let me explain. I think that they left uh, Sagittarius rant last episode um, in order to show us all this, like how fed up all the girls are with Sagittaria. And for all of us as viewers, right, to be like, ah, oh, Sagittaria is like the villain of the season. They wanted to give Sagittaria a little bit like a Fifi O'Hara edit, but it backfired uh, to the point where 
almost everyone uh, supports Sagittaria because the gaslighting was so obvious. And this type of edit where all of the girls are talking very, like all the time, there's no other conversation other than Sagittaria, Sagittaria. Sagittaria is being a brat. Sagittaria is very unthankful and Sagittaria is not being very thought. Oh, Sagittaria is so annoying. Oh, Sagittaria, she is such a brat all the time. And it doesn't make sense. And I know for a fact that it wasn't like that. And that is so uh, produced like in the editing room and how it, it is produced, right? We have many other examples of situations like this in Drag Race where it was handled in a different way and where it was edited in a different way. This is, it's just crazy, okay? So for the whole episode, Sagittarius is just like not there, okay? I'm going to explain all the final things at the end. Uh, so we have context, but yeah. Mm, whole episode, Sagittaria is just absent. She's not there. She's gone. So basically, uh, what happens is that the girl group that is not from season two, uh, they translated it to three UTTP up to the pussy, something like that. In Spanish, it was three HC, tres hasta el coño. Um, the translation, like up to the pus, the pussy, I think you would understand, but hasta el coño, up to the pussy in Spanish means fed up. Like we're absolutely fed up. Like I can't, I can't even, I can't even. Three, I can't even. That's what it would mean, okay? Up to the pussy. And the other ones decided to name themselves the Opa Girls. Uh, they have to make the, their own choreo and Carmelo uh, just joins like, yeah, I'm going to be your backup dancer, but I'm usually your choreographer, so I'm going to be judging very severely everything you do. Oh, is this supposed to be a comedy challenge? Oh no, is this serious? Oh, okay, okay, just checking. I thought it was like uh, unnecessary. So I'm going to skip over all the Sagittaria drama until the end. Uh, we're going to go with each of the verses, if that's okay. I'm going to write them over here and explain them for you. We're going to start with the overgirls, which are the girls from season two. We have Sethlas, Yurije, and Samantha. Uh, Samantha, first verse, she starts and says, What the fucking hell is up? That's in English. Samantha is here to make you enjoy. With me, you're going to piss yourself which means to laugh a lot. Uh, Setless uh, says, from the Canary Island to the entire world and 30 centimeter from the ground, unparalleled drag, wrinkled potatoes. Why wrinkled potatoes? Because she's talking about paparruga that would translate as wrinkled potatoes, but it's a food, it's a dish that's very traditional in the Canary Island. Delicious, by the way. So she says, red blue potato, because that's from, like, if you're from Georgia and you say, oh, yay, peaches, or something like that, okay? And this is like a chorus that each one of them, I think, does a little bit differently. Uh, for this group, it says, want to be a superstar, then you start to admire the best, I'm going to kill it. Want to be international, simply a goddess to pray to, you're going to see me shine. Um, and yeah, that connects a little bit with the runway. I don't know if that was intentional or just like, yeah, I'm here to slay, shine, snatch the crown. Um, let's continue. Juriji, mother of the universe, says, uh, the prettiest one, it's only me you want to look at. The little doll you want to F. I'm going to sing opera to hypnotize you. And then she sings opera. Isn't she like Conti? I love her. And then she continues. My face is porcelain. I don't have any dullness. These translations, you guys, these are the subtitles, by the way. And Setla says, I'm super powerful, religious, and dangerous. And Samantha says, my humor is lethal. I'm the queen of the place. Sachet Chante, Sachet Chante, the effing queens of all sorts. And then they do the chorus again. 
and then they say season two in the house we're not stupid at all honey they say we're not stupid at all but that in spanish it's used with an expression that says i don't have even one hair of stupid on my hair that's what they said i don't even have one stupid hair on me we are vixens they don't say vixens nothing similar to vixens but it's okay we are vixens hot and horny and bold and they, they take off their wigs and the three of them are bold um and they reminded me of yeah <laughs> i thought they did amazing all three of them i think especially judici did very very well and stethless did amazing too samantha was up to par if i had to get, give any critiques personally i don't know what i would say i think they did amazing 10 out of 10 uh amazing song i think the production helps a lot both groups obviously but if you compare this song with the song in season one the production is a lot better like the dancing the choreo and especially the sound because that song las cinco y cuarto from season one you remember the one the one that Arancha, castilla la mancha you remember that one it was so funny and then we have tres hasta el coño 3hc or three up to the pussy or however you want to say it remember it just means fed up i can't even i'm over this that's what it means okay lyrics first up is ornella and she says i told you i was not leaving i have pussy and nerve to show i'm not going to hesitate ever again and sagittaria says tonight i'm going to carouse I'm not even sure what this word means, but I'm 100% sure that's not the correct translation. She says, I'm going to slay, basically, okay? Um, get ready, honey, you're going to enjoy it. My body on fire, you are going to desire. So original. Then the mini, like, chorus thing that they change. It says, I came to kill it, to stand out. If you don't like what you see, change the channel and start criticizing okay let's take a moment <laughs> like if you don't like what you see and you're criticizing me while i'm doing this chat this challenge uh you should change your channel and then cr start criticizing a, a different tv show i guess you're talking about like change your tv ch channel if you want to criticize so you criticize master chef uh, instead of Drag Race, I just thought it was, you know. It's funny how they have the girls from the other group watching in, you know, the workroom or whatever. But they keep, like, cutting. So there are parts of the song that didn't make it to the edit because someone is talking from the workroom and it's annoying. So I don't know how Poopy's verse starts. She says that she's going to achieve something but i don't know what she's going to achieve because i can only hear how samantha is saying that their their outfits are not coordinated like that's not important information i already noticed thank you but yeah mm, she poopy starts saying that she's going to achieve something okay and then she says i run towards the goal i leave the fear behind wild fresh strong fear, feral and free um yeah, I like Poopy's verse. She's cool. Uh, she does this very well. Of course, she's a singer. You can tell, like, she makes, like, funny, punny songs all the time. And we know her for that. So, yeah, she was very good at this challenge. And then they all say, ad, 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 this is about to start. Ad, 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 come parade. Parade. It's like walk the runway, but come and, rock the, and walk the runway with us. That would be what it means, but well. And then they say, Ornella says, confident, steady step, shoulders back. And Sagittaria, magazine cover, femme fatale. And Ornella says, if I turn around, you won't forget. And they all say, a huge peluso ass, because Nadie Peluso is very well known, of course, for her songs, but for her very, very juicy behind. Neither one of the groups did bad. I would say that the second group, the 3HC, the, of course the outfits were not coordinated. Um, 
they say that Sagittaria was out of rhythm sometimes. I did not see that. The little clip that they show, I think, was not significant of it. Um, I didn't see her being offbeat or I didn't see any of that. I thought that the outfits were not coordinated, that the choreo was not very good, and I didn't like maybe the lyrics as much. I think Pupi was the best in that group, but neither Sagittaria nor Ornella did a, a bad job. I think the six of them from the three, from the two groups, the three and three, the six of them did very well, obviously. Uh, it's difficult for me to think which one did worse from all of them. I really don't know. So I think it's going to go down to the runway, who has the best runway, right? I need a little bit of help with this runway because category is stress. And as I understand stress, I understand it as rhinestones. But I don't know if it means rhinestones because here is where like my languages get a little mixed up. I think that two words in each language mean the same thing, but then I discover they don't. And yeah, if you have grown up in a different country, you know what I'm talking about. But what is stress exactly? Because in my opinion, it was rhinestones, but then I don't understand all of the looks. But yeah, we're going to just, it, because there no one judged that, like, oh, that's not the category. I'm just not going to have, take that into account because I don't know what the word means. The looks were very, very cool. Ornella is this lantern fish, or however you call it. I guess it's the fish with the little bright thingy that, so the face looks like it has a different lighting than the rest of the outfit and the body. I thought it was super different, super cool, kind of, I don't know, like genderless, gender fuck. I love it very, very much. Then Poopy's runway is dedicated to Death Becomes Her. Um, don't kill me, but I have not watched this film. I know I, I'm supposed to, and I know I should have, but I haven't. I'm so sorry to disappoint you. Um, I think this look was very effective, and because of the, I don't know, the excitement that got from the jury, I guess that it was very, very successful. I don't see a lot of rhinestone. I guess she says that it's all made of sequin, like iridescent sequin, and that's the category. I think that they're using strass just like it shines. Um, so yeah, this was super cool, super original. I really like the edit uh, that she posted on social media with Vita de Vein and Morfina. They're two super cool drags from that live in Madrid. Um, super cool. This Judy G outfit, I think, is one of the best outfits that has ever existed in the history of the human race. I am, um, wow, gagged, love it. 1,000 million out of 10. Um, amazing. I see the full rhinestone and, like, everything, like, the heaviness, the face, the makeup, everything for me in this outfit. This is a 10 out of 10. Sagittaria has a little wardrobe malfunction, so she starts with this Dior silhouette from the 50s and it transforms into this Mugler wet look, like Kim Kardashian in the Met Gala, like that type of look. Um, but the heel breaks and she has to walk on her tippy toes, pretending that she still has heels on. Uh, I think she tries to overcome it as best as she can. But um, yeah, they're a little unfortunate for Sagittaria. The look was beautiful. I loved the like beaded fringe hair. Um, super cool hair, right? I don't know how Sagittaria can look this good with hair that is so flat. I was saying last episode how much I liked when she had like a bigger, fuller hair. But even with the flat ass beaded wig, I think she looks amazing. Again, this look from Sethless is 1,000 million out of 10. Like, Sethless uh, does drag at a complete different level, and I think that she came to All Stars in a complete different game than any of the other competitors. Um, this is just out of this world. I'm so happy that Sethless is able to bring Canary Island's drag. As I said, uh, this is very Canary Island, very Carnaval look and I'm so happy that Cetlas is able to translate into the runway. 
as I have said many times, uh, Canary Islands drag is done in a stage with thousands and thousands and thousands of people. So it tends to be very, very, very big and luxurious. So maybe the balls in the United States, it's not such a huge big stadium where you can like really appreciate all the little details and it's very much detail oriented because people are looking at like every single thing. Um, Canary Island drag is that too, of course, but it's supposed to be seen at a very far distance. So it's very big, very shiny and very amazing. Uh, this look again, 10 out of 10, you cannot say anything bad about this look. Samantha Valentine's look, she's full of little mirrors and crystals. I guess the rhinestones are on her face with the little mirrors. And I personally did not like this look very much. I thought it was cool, but I would have loved a lot more the reveal she takes off her wig. If that was her real bold head with crystals, I know that you don't got the time to glue all those thousands of little crystals on your face and on your bald head. Uh, and it's a time thing, obviously. But yeah, it was a little bit baggy on the back and it wasn't like fully crystal. I don't know. I, did, I would have skipped the reveal part of it, to be honest. I think it was good enough without it. Uh, I think it's a good look, but we just saw Setless and we just saw Judy D. Uh, so it looks a little less impressive, I believe, but it's still a very good week for Samantha. So this is when hell breaks loose. And of course they say that the winning group was the group from season two, the Ova girls. And the other group, the group from not like the 3HC group is in the bottom. And from the three of them, they chose Sagittaria and Ornella to be in the bottom. That I do agree with. I think Opie did objectively better than both of them, but I think neither Ornella nor Poopy did bad. And from the winning group, they decide that the lip sync is going to be uh, not Sethless, but Jurigi and Samantha. I don't really agree with that, but I'm okay with it. I think they just said it because Sethless has been on the top forever, so they're like giving an opportunity to the other people. But I think objectively, Sethless did better than Samantha. Um, I'm not going to complain because I understand the logic behind it and I'm very happy for Samantha and I think she did a very good job this week. And as the judges said, like when you love Samantha and you see her doing bad, like in her season, you're like, wow, I know that you are able of so much more. And it's really nice to see her flourish here in the All-Stars. But um, yeah, and she was in the top and she won the whole episode, in fact. Spoiler alert. Um, but yeah, I'm happy for her. But I think that she was only in the top because they didn't want to put Setless there again. And then Sagittaria, when she sees that she is in the bottom with uh, Ornella, she says, can I, can I, can I say something? Uh, I want to go home. Is now the correct moment to say that? And um, Supreme says, no, 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 honey, you do not get to decide that. It's the, the girls that are lip syncing, it's their decision. So you shut up and you stay here put because this is not your decision to make. And we're all like, wow. Wow. So let's, let's, let's get like the whole thing. Okay. So we have just witnessed the whole episode where every single, every single conversation was about how bratty Sagittaria was and how entitled and how annoying, like every single thing to the point where it's annoying and difficult to watch for the viewer. And then you say, she says, I want to go home. And you say, no, 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 honey, honey, no, 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 wait a moment. No, you don't get to decide that. Um, just stay put there. You look cute. Just stay there. What is this? What was going on? So then Sagittaria says, well, eh, okay, then girls, you know what to do. Because at this point, Sagittaria is thinking that if she leaves, uh, no, no one is going to win. So no one is going to win the 2,500 euros that they make when they win the episode. So she thinks, 
If I leave, they don't have to lip sync, so there is no winner, so no one makes the 2500. So she says, well, okay, then I'll let them lip sync, I'll let someone win the money, and I'll let someone eliminate me. So that's what she does, right? So we go back to Untucked. Let's set what is happening. Um, Sagittaria, it doesn't matter if she's right or not. She was very mm, sensitive last week about a decision that she didn't agree with, okay? Before that, let's, let's go a little bit before that. She was feeling some type of way in episode one or two, I don't remember. And um, Suprema and everyone was saying, oh, you have to like let it out, express yourself. Don't be afraid of your emotions. If you're feeling some type of way, you have to express it and let it go. Like you have to say what's going on. And then she says what's going on. And then it's not like you should never say what's going on because you're just like annoying and a brat and entitled and all these things, right? Then Setla says, oh, Sagittaria, if he wanted to leave, you would have left at the beginning of the episode instead of waiting until the critiques to see that you did not do well uh, just to leave. Uh, does that critique make sense? So you're criticizing that she wants to leave at the end of the episode instead of instead of leaving at the beginning of the episode because I don't understand the reasoning behind it, uh, especially because she just had a very big panic attack and an anxiety crisis and she was severely medicated and the least thing that she was supposed to do in that state is take like important decisions. So yeah, you were all telling her like, don't make a decision now, just calm down, just see how it goes, just blah, blah, blah. So when Sagittaria wants to leave, they just say, oh, you don't accept the critiques, but she does because she's leaving. They say, no, you don't want to leave because they are eliminating you. You want to leave because you're angry. So that way you're not exposed to, like, it doesn't matter. We lived this in season one with Inti and what happened? No one was criticizing Inti for one and a half episodes and with all these confessional things, speaking very, very poorly of her, being so mean and disrespectful because I love Samantha, usually, uh, I nor, like I love her, but in this episode she was being very disrespectful. Um, I don't understand why, if it was because of the production that was filming the confessionals with her, I think she was being a little bit mean. I understand there was tension between the girls and Sagittaria, that's okay, but we have lived tension every single season and things have never been solved this way. Let's go back to season one. Inti wants to leave the competition. What happens? She goes uh, to the back and she starts taking off her makeup. And what do they do? Do they spend one and a half episodes saying how awful she is? Or does Supreme go to the workroom and talk with her? Like in a respectful one-to-one -one type of way? No, right? Because Sagittari was to a point like, Earlier in the, in the episode, she said that she was sorry and they didn't accept her apologies for some reason. They said, no, no, yeah. Like some of them did, but some of like, it's like, no, but you're saying you're sorry because of this, but not because of all of that. Or, but to her face, they're saying, oh, great. Thank you for apologizing. Then she says that she wants to leave. And then they say, no, but you cannot say you want to leave because it's up to the girls. And then she says, okay, so then I don't want to leave. Then it's up to you. If you save me, I'll try to do my best. And then they're criticizing her. What is it? Do you want to leave or not? Are you just saying it for attention? And now you don't want to leave? And it's like, it doesn't matter what Sagittaria does. She is not going to win in this. I understand that Sagittaria was annoying because... Uh, for example, Ornella has been in this position since the very first episode of season three. And it's been the whole season three and the whole All-Stars that we have been watching. And she hasn't got the glory that she deserves. And she was severely criticized many times. 
and the judges have been have been like super wacky with her many times. So I understand that when, when Sagittaria comes to Ornella and says, Oh, it's so unfair, I just can't, these judges are horrible. Ornella is like, girl, hold my beer. Like, this is nothing. Ornella has suffered a lot more, this exact feeling, but a lot more than Sagittaria. And she is not acting the way Sagittaria is acting. That doesn't mean that this it should be allowed. It's not. It's uncomfortable to watch. We like when people like each other, understand each other, and when they don't try to force a certain narrative down our throat. Because it backfired. Because if you are very talented in producing a show, you're able to do it in a way where everyone understands that as I was explaining, Fifi O'Hara was a bit like delusional and she was a bit jealous and we all agreed, kind of, right? But the way that they tried to force this narrative was not done in a talented and smooth way. So it has absolutely backfired and I think, of course, there's a lot of, of you that do not think what I think, okay? But if you go out and read Twitter or any reviewer ever or anything, you will see that most people agree with what I'm saying, that this was uncomfortable to watch and it made people be on Sagittarius' side a lot more than the production was expecting. I think that there are a lot of things that you're not really aware of until the season airs and you're just like hoping that the people are going to understand it in a certain way. And people did not understand it in that way. People understand it, understood it in a completely different way. So it completely backfired because this episode, Seth Liss did amazing. This episode, no one even cares that Samantha wins for some reason, and we should because Samantha's so cool, Samantha's amazing, everyone loves Samantha. We have seen some of the most amazing runways from any category of drag race ever. Um, no one is talking about it, we're just talking about this stupid drama about Sagittaria, and it makes no sense. And it's not about anything that Sagittaria did or didn't, it's about how it was handled. Not correct, not okay. I do not agree. It was very ugly seeing all of them in all of the confessionals just say mean things about one of them. I don't care who it is or why it is. If it, if it feels ugly and forced and not cool, it just feels not cool. I think the production was trying to do something different, but it backfired. And that's it, you guys. That's it. That's it. The winner of the episode is Samantha Valentine's um, very happy for Samantha. I think that she was just trying to go with the flow, with the production, and just if they ask her to express certain things, she would express certain things like, it's not that serious. This is a TV show about drag queens. And for Samantha, this is not that serious. And it's not, you guys, this is not that serious. And I know Samantha and Poopy, like they have all spoken with Sagittaria and they have apologized and they're cool now. But this is way over the fact if Sagittaria is right or not. It's not even the point. Like, it's it, the favoritism of the judges this week. I don't think that they were favoring anyone special. Like, it's obvious that Sagittaria had a wardrobe malfunction. I don't think that the judges were super crazy this week. Um, it's not about that. It's, it's how they're trying to sell a certain narrative. But we have... And Sagittaria is used to the season one drag race. It's used to the season one judges. It's used to the season one vibe. Uh, not this nonsense, which is very, very different. Nevertheless, the quality of drag is amazing. The quality of the drama is uncomfortable to watch, but is high drama. I'm just sad that they're very... Hard work is not, I don't know, showcased in a better light, to be honest. Many of you probably don't agree with what I say. I just want you to know that I'm obviously not shading like Seth less, of course. I think she's wrong in many things that she says, but I think all of them are wrong. I think Sagittaria is wrong in many things she says. Like, um, I, I think she has the drag 
draggy drag in a whole different level and a whole different tier than everyone else. I think she came to win and I think she deserved to win this episode, but she didn't. That's what I think. So um, even if you don't agree with me, that's fine. That's okay. I want to know what you guys think. Of course, uh, congratulations to Samantha for finally winning uh, a lip sync and everything. It was so cool of her. I'm going to leave references down below of songs of Nati Pelusa as well. And the eliminated queen was obviously Sagittaria. I'm happy she was able to like stop a situation and uh, I am happy that she was able to not accept a certain narrative. Um, I'm happy for her. I think that she won, obviously. <laughs> like she won. I want to know your guys' opinions. Um, of course, you guys remind me every week, like, Marta, you're being biased. Like, I say every single episode that I am 100% biased. My job here is not to bring you the objective truth. The objective truth is the episode. You can just go watch it, right? I'm not needed for that. I give the context and I give how I'm seeing it. So it's I, I'm obviously very, 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 very biased. And that's how I'm going to keep on being because that's me and you're here to watch me. If you want to watch the objective truth, you will watch the episode. So yeah, that's all. I appreciate all of your comments, even if you don't agree with me. Again, if you want to support my channel in any way, you have my PayPal account down below. And I'll see you next week for next week episode. I love you guys. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stay queer. Stay queer.